Welcome to day two of the Q4 Income Accelerator Workshop. We're going to make sure that we can help your Amazon Q4 be one of the best Q4s ever. And that is including the fact that we are already 22 days into Q4 of 2024. So we want to make sure that you're, you finish October strong. We want to make sure that your November is amazing and your December is even better than that. And with some of the things that we teach you, we can set you up for a really strong January also so that you can have a strong start to the year if you follow through with the things that we talk about um, and, and our suggestions for running your Amazon business right now. If you are new to Amazon and you're still just kind of kicking the tires and trying to figure out, this is going to be good for you so you can know how to experience next year's Q4 because hopefully you'll be starting your Amazon business soon, getting things going. In fact, Q4, Q4 years ago was actually when I started selling on Amazon. My first sale was, I think, one of the first, one, like the first week of December. And I was able to have started off really strong and it helped set me up to have a really good year. So even if you have not been selling on Amazon, now is a great time to start. Don't believe the lie that you're hearing or that your mind is trying to convince you that it's too late to start your Amazon business. You should have started it uh, five months ago so that you can have a really good Q4 this year. That's just your brain playing a trick on you, lying to you because yes, it would have been great if you had started it before, but we can't go back in time. That invention has not been invented yet. We can't go back in time. We can only make the best decisions today. And Q4 is a really great place to start to be able to have uh, sales start up quickly and to be able to have income come in by, by because of the sales velocity that uh, Q4 brings and the prices that seem to go up on almost every item. Q4 is awesome way to start. That's how I started. And if you have that opportunity to do that now, we implore you to get the ball rolling with opening up your Amazon account and getting the under uh, the basics understood. We can help you with that. We'll come back to that later. But today, we're talking about the unlimited inventory advantage. How you, whether you've sold on Amazon before or you've never sold on Amazon, how you can build up your Amazon business to have unlimited number of inventory options for you to find inventory that's profitable that you can find again and again to sell again and again. Again, don't forget to download the workshop, uh, workbook, fultimfba.com slash Q4 workbook. We're going to be filling out these blanks as we go on, along. And so I want to share my screen. Rebecca, you can let me know if you see the full screen on your screen. And with a picture of me, a uh, video of me in the corner and a picture of you in the corner also, do you see that? I do. I see it. Uh, excellent. All right. So the unlimited inventory advantage, that's what we're talking about today, day two of the Amazon Q4 Income Accelerator Workshop. And we're going to be focusing on replens, how replens can boost your sales, boost your profits. We're going to be talking about replens that you can replenish all year round. We're going to be talking about Q4 replens. We're also going to be talking about how to even find inventory items that are hard to find. The hard to find sold out items that are sold out at almost all the stores. We're going to talk about how you can find out what they are. Be one of the first to know what's a hot toy. Not just the magazine that the store puts out saying, hey, this is a hot toy. You should buy this to give to your kid. But for you as an Amazon seller to know what the hot toys are going to be before the mass uh, consumer starts to get wind of it and know that it's a hard to find Q4 toy. We'll talk about all that stuff today. But replans for all 12 months of the year, especially in Q4. Replans are amazing. And I do want to remind you, we are on day two of a five-day workshop. If you are here live on the calls, day one, two, three, four, and five, if you are here live, then on Friday, we will choose one lucky person who happens to live in the United States to win this FBA starter pack, a 16-inch impulse sealer, a Dymo label printer, also the Dymo labels, uh, as well as multiple sizes of uh, shrink um, poly bags to be able to to make protect your items uh, while they are in the Amazon warehouses. So this is a multi hundred dollar type of prize. That one lucky person 
uh, because shipping is expensive. We cannot, uh, we're not allowing international people to to join to to win this particular prize. Um, but if someone in the U.S. is here all five days of this workshop, you have a chance to be entered into this giveaway. So be sure you're here. If you're like, oh, I just I, this is my first day. I missed day one. There might be someone who's only here. You know, there might be times where people are here just four out of the five days. And if the number of people who are here for the most is four out of the five days, well, guess what? We're going to pick the person from who's have been here all four days. If we don't have anybody who get, who is here all five days. Anyway, it's something that we want to give you and, and reward you for being here all five days. So um, that's our giveaway. Don't forget about that. So you are here. Make it a priority. So what is a replan? Um, you might have already heard of replans before. I'm going to help you introduce you. Uh, here's a, a replan definition. It's short for the word replenishable. That's our first blank. Replan is short for the word replenishable. Um, we like to make uh, you know word, uh, short versions of long words. Uh, abbreviations for uh, ironically enough abbreviation does not have a short version have a, an abbreviation for it uh, but anyway a replan is short for replenishable what does replenishable mean uh, there's different definitions of the word replenishable to make full or complete again by supplying what has been used or is lacking and you see this empty glass on the bottom of your screen empty glass uh, you can add more water in and replenish the water it's to, to make full again something that's been used up or have been used. Um, replen, replenish also means to nourish or become full again. When you get hungry, you need to replenish yourself of foods and water. Um, you need to have you know good food to eat. Um, another type of definition of replenish means to fill or make complete again, add new stock or supply to. And that's the term that we as Amazon resellers, third-party sellers online, use to to define a replen as an item that we are can complete. Can when we start to sell out, add new stock, add new supply to it. You know, um, replenish is uh, is something that can really help you uh, in your Amazon business. And so, uh, the resellers' definition of replen is this: it is an inventory item. You can easily restock before your item stop level is depleted. It's an item you can find again and again to sell again and again. That's our next fill in the blank. A replen is an item that you can find again and again and sell again and again. There's a lot of things that resellers focus on where they're almost never going to find a replen. We're going to jump into those and tell you those strategies might be good for beginners just to kind of get your feet wet. But if you really want long-term success selling on Amazon, you need to have multiple sources of inventory that you can find again and again and sell again and again. Um, so think about this. If you um, have some lotion, what is it? You know, you buy lotion, uh, you, you buy multiples in stock. A lotion could be something you can find again and again and sell again and again. Maybe there's toys that are out there. Q4 toys the number one category to sell on Amazon. And there's uh, toys out there that you can find again and again and sell again and again. What about things like grocery items? Yes, there's food that you can find and again and again to sell again and again. And, and even like clothing and shoes, things like that, you can find them again and again to sell again and again. And you're like, Stephen, I don't find these kind of items. Where can I find that? We will definitely jump into that very soon. So as you are looking at different items to sell on Amazon, you want to find the items that you can, you know, can find on a consistent basis and sell on a consistent basis. Now, replens are very, very powerful. They might be one of the most powerful aspects of selling online. And the thing that's going to get you to where you're making a full-time income selling on Amazon. Or if you want a solid side hustle, that's going to be the one that's going to help you make the most money with the least amount of time involved. The power of replens is amazing. And so, uh, like, how did I discover replens? Well, I discovered replens on accident, actually. Um, kind of a little backstory on me. I first started selling on Amazon in Q4 of 2011. Like I told you, my first sale was the first week of December. 
here's a picture of me and my four kids uh my four boys they're you know they're a lot they're 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 all grown now basically um but they were little and i was a single dad trying to make incomes trying to be able to sell stuff online to make enough money so i didn't have to put them in daycare they can stay at home um and i started selling on that in q4 2011. I used to focus on garage sales, uh, thrift stores, uh, retail clearance items, and that got me started, but I realized it was not sustainable. I was focusing on the low-hanging fruit. It's called low-hanging fruit because it's the bottom of the tree. It's easy to grab when you're just walking by, does not require any effort, and it's, it's easy. Uh, the only problem with easy is that everyone does easy. Everyone focuses on easy. No one wants to put the hard work in. Um, in 2013, I married Rebecca. She became an amazing stepmom um, and an amazing uh, business partner as well. Um, and in 2013, I realized that this whole working tons of hours a week, trying to find stuff at retail clearance aisles or garage sales or thrift stores, it was not sustainable for me. Um, and my kids and my wife. I needed to find something like what we I figured out was a replan that I can buy again and again on Amazon. And so in 2015, almost 10 years ago, I accidentally discovered replenishable items. Replenishable items completely revolutionized my Amazon business and they can do the same for you. Um, so when I first discovered my first replan, like I said, it was on accident. I was at a clearance aisle of a Walmart. And on this Walmart, I love the Walmarts that have the little price checker. Uh, if there happens to be a price checker nearby, you can see on the screen uh, that there is a little, you know, you need a price, you can scan it. Because here's a tip, in the clearance aisle, <clears throat> there is not, there are not very many, some items are clearance priced, and they're clearance priced in the computer. But also, there are items that are clearance priced in the computer. Uh, they've maybe they've got a, a clearance, or excuse me, they're clearance priced on the item, but actually the item in the computer is not really um, actually priced that low. And so um, I noticed that that you know just having a, a, a price check was great. Well, I came across, in fact. Where is it? Right here. I came across this Mickey Mouse plush toy. Um, and you're like, Stephen, you found this back in 2015 and you still have it? Yes, because it. Rev this is my first replay that I ever found. Mickey Mouse, uh, you, you, you press its, its paw um, or hand, but whatever you believe. Uh, and it sings songs and it talks and, and it's, it's all sorts of fun. And, um, and I was like, okay, well, um, this item, it's not, it's, it's, I'm, I don't even, I don't know how much it costs. I don't know if it's, uh, if it's affordable or if it prices too much or whatever. So I scanned the little scanner right on the aisle because I need to find a price. So it told me what to, what, how much it was. And it was $15.97. And I was like, that's not clearance priced. $15.97 is not clearance priced at all. It is something, and I was just frustrated, but you know what? I teach my students to scan everything and to not make any assumptions. And so that's what I did. I took my phone, I scanned the barcode of the toy. This was not out of the box. It was still in the box. And I saw it was selling on Amazon for $38 to $40. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's that's going to give me about a six to seven dollar profit if I'm able to do that after Amazon fees come out and my cost to purchase it. I I'll be able to. And I was like, wait a minute. This also this item, it's not clearance an item. Maybe there's more on the regular price aisle. So I take Mickey, I I go up and down the aisles and I I I find that there was about seven or eight different Mickey Mouse items, regular priced that I can buy and make about seven to eight dollars per sale on each item and there was about seven of them there and then i realized oh i, I got all seven of them and then i thought whoa 
I live in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. There are a ton of Walmarts here. I spent the next few days going to every Walmart, buying all of these Mickey Mouses, and they sold on Amazon. And the cool thing about Q4 is that the price has started around $38, $40, but continued to go up. And by the time December was around, it was about 85 bucks for this same toy. And I knew where to go, and I know where to find it, and I bought all of these in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I didn't even think at the time, well, maybe I should look on the walmart.com website to buy them from, I mean, there's just, when you find a, a replenishable item, and this was a replenishable item for me for multiple years. In fact, probably about five or six years of selling on Amazon, I bought these year round and especially in Q4. So Mickey made me a lot of money. Um, and so uh, I, I just, I wanted to let you know about that story. I was able to um, buy Mickey Mouse and sell it. In fact, here is a, uh, we were going down to, I live in Dallas, Fort Worth area. My family lives in uh, in Houston. So we we're driving down from North Texas to the Houston area. And we stopped at a Walmart and we got a bunch of, of toys. And you can even see in this picture, all the Mickey Mouse, I mean, you really can't, you can see more of the box, the yellow box that it was in. But you can see all the Mickey Mouses that I found. Um, and then if you want to zoom in on the picture, um, there's uh, my son Drew sitting in the back seat, very happy. He was a, a big helper on this. And you can see Rebecca in the passenger seat looking at me saying, can we please get back on the road? We need to, we still have an hour and a half to drive. And so we got back on the road, uh, got this back to the house, unloaded all the Mickey, the Mickey Mouses that we got. My son helped me. He decided to stack them up because he was just having fun. And we made some really good money selling Mickey Mouses for years. And it was something I just accidentally stumbled upon. And then I realized, wait, if there is an item I can buy at regular price at my Walmart or Target or Walgreens or Kohl's that's actually selling for a lot more year round on Amazon, or maybe it's just selling a lot really profitable during Q4, because that's when prices go up all the time. Maybe there's more that I can find. And I started looking for more and more to find. And so replens really transformed my business and they can do the same for you to stop sourcing garage sales or thrift stores. You're not going to be able to go deep on those. Those items are not going to be replenished. Um, and I only source clearance items when I have extra time. I focus first and solely on replens. My main focus, buy items that I know I will sell again and again. And that's where you break through to finally make a full-time income selling on Amazon. Finding those items, like I said, replens come in waves in the fact that there's sometimes a replen. My longest lasting replen lasted over eight years where I was able to find the item, buy it, sell it on Amazon for over eight years. And um, and there's a lot I can teach you about how to find replens and how to know where they are and how to know if a replen that was has died off comes back to life again. There's a lot. Um, but I source replens. I source it through retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and wholesale arbitrage. You can find replens in all three of those strategies. And I'm able to make a full-time income selling mostly replenishable items. There's a picture of me and my fam from, I think that picture was from early 2021. We need to get an update, a uh, family picture. Uh, Cause now the youngest is the tallest and um, yeah, uh, probably about two inches taller than I am. Anyway, replens transitioned and, and really transformed my Amazon business. And so you might be like, what's a replen? Um, what, what, what is a replen? You can find replens in every Amazon category. You can find replens in every size, shape, weight, small, big, in the middle. You can find replens, like I said, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, wholesale. Almost anything can be a replen. Anything. If it sells on a consistent basis, not everything is a replen, but anything could be a replen. And so, so a lot of times we disregard certain categories because maybe we just don't know them that well or we don't assume it's going to be a replen but anything can be a replen so why should you focus on replens replens are awesome i mean no more one-off items yes 
if you find a one-off item and it's profitable, sell it. But most likely, you're standing in the clearance aisle if you're getting a one-off item, meaning it's just you're just going to buy it once and sell it once. But replans give you consistently where you're able to not just get one uh, Pluto plush uh, and make $5.00. Not just get one box of Rice Krispie Cheats and, and make $10. Not just get one pair of shoes and make $20, but you're able to go deeper. You're able to go and get multiple items. And so, man, I'm going to stock up on all these Pluto plushes. It's 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 really great. You find more items to resell this way. Going deeper on the grocery items on the, and the shoes. The profits are easier because, again... You're not having to find so many individual things. You just need to find items that you can go deep on. And you can turn that Pluto plush into multiple $5 bills. And grocery items, multiple $10 bills. The predictable cash flow is one of the best parts of finding replens. Um, it helps you have more stability in your Amazon business. If you feel like your Amazon business is only going as good as your last um our last trip to look for inventory whether it's your last trip to a retail store or your last session sourcing online or your last attempt to get new wholesale accounts the replans helps you have more stability with replans you can take the foot off the gas and kind of take a deep breath now you don't want to take the foot off too much because again <clears throat> Replens come in waves. So every replen eventually is going to dry up. And so you want to make sure you have other replens that are going to take, take over and continue that predictable cash flow. Replens are also easy to outsource. I mean, imagine if I went to Target. I found that the plush Pluto um, toy was profitable, that the... Rice Krispie treats were for profitable, and uh, the pair of shoes that I found were profitable at the Target that I was looking at. Well, you can outsource some, like maybe outsource to a college student or outsource online and pay someone a fair wage to just drive around town, go to all the Targets, and pick up these items. Um, you can even do uh, for a lot of these stores. You can even do like uh. Uh, you know, pickup where, you know, um, you 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 pay someone to just drive to the parking lot and they bring the, the items out to you at in the customer pickup sections. And so um, curbside delivery, that's the right word for it that I was forgetting for a little bit. So benefits of replans are awesome um, and more long term success with your Amazon business. If you're still just finding one off items here and there. It's a good process to learn Amazon. It's a good process to learn um, different categories because each of the categories on Amazon have a different personality. But the big question is, where do you find replants? Here's our next fill in the blank. Where do you find these replants? Um, do you find them in clearance aisles? Hopefully by now, you know the answer to this question. No, you don't find them in the clearance aisle. You can't Go to a clearance aisle, find an item, and then go back next month and find more of the exact same item. No, you find clearance items at, or do you find replens at garage sales? No, you're not going to go to someone's house at a garage sale and be like, uh, can can I buy more of this next week or next month? No, you're not going to find a replen at a garage sale. Uh, thrift stores? I think you're probably picking up on the trend now. No, no, thrift stores are not a good place for replens. What about estate sales? No. Hey, are you going to die next month? And uh, no, no, uh, estate sales are not a way to do it. Um, items that are on sale. Well, if the ROI of the item is only available with the item being on sale, then no, you, you'd you have to wait around for the item to become on sale again. Sales are not forever. Uh, liquidation lots. No, no, you are not finding items that you can go back and easily replenish once your stock starts to um, get closer to zero and you need to get more stocks sent to Amazon, that's not where you can find. So where can you find replens? Here's the quick one word answer. Anywhere. Anywhere that items are being sold at regular price. 
that's where you can find replens. Not the clearance aisles, it's the regular priced aisles. In almost every category, almost every type of store, the items that are regular priced, if they can be sold on Amazon, there can be replens. Now, again, not everywhere you look are you going to find uh, replens. But the more you look, the more you can find. Uh, so let's let's look at different types of sourcing strategies uh, that you can use to find replens. I, I do it with retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and wholesale, and you can do the same thing. And you want us to, if you want us to coach you and teach you how to do that, um then then we can do that um so which stores or suppliers do you plan to use first in adding your own replays in fact that's the next blank i want you to think about where you usually source whether it's an online store whether it's a retail store um or whether it's a wholesale brand that you hope to to maybe earn the opportunity to sell on amazon which stores or suppliers do you plan to use first in finding your own replens. I want you to write that down. Um, and if you want to put it in the chat and let us know. We I, actually don't, don't. I I, I thought about that. With I My filter was not working again because there might be people who are like, I'm gonna go to this, this store and they post it in the ch chat and someone else is like, oh, I never thought about going to that store. I'm gonna go to that store too. No, obviously we wanna keep that quiet. Um, do not tell people where you're going to source for replens, but write it on your paper so that you know and will remember. Um, which stores or suppliers are you going to start with? I want you to name three and write it down. Uh, you know, so what the first question that I skipped, what sourcing sourcing method are you going to use? RA, retail arbitrage, going locally to retail stores, define inventory. Online arbitrage, looking online or wholesale relationships, buying directly from the brand. So decide which strategy you're going to use, RA, OA, or wholesale, and then think about three possible stores or brands that you want to reach out with. And, and you can start finding more items to sell on Amazon. So why doesn't everyone focus on replens if they're so awesome? Good question. Thank you for asking. Um, Yes, clearance aisles can help you potentially load up a shopping cart of one-off items. But again, you're only getting one, maybe two. But replens provide consistent inventory. Garage sales, man, the ROI is awesome. 5,000%, 400%, lots of, of high percentage ROI. But you're only getting one of item. You're never going to be able to replenish. But replens provide consistent inventory sources. Low hanging fruit, it's great for the short term, but you're only getting the leftover inventory. I mean, that's kind of what a clearance item is. It's a leftover inventory. It's an item that didn't sell much at regular price that is being sold on clearance. But replens provide consistent inventory. And that's where you need to recognize that replens is what you need to be focusing on to make a full-time income. And replans during Q4 is totally possible. So when you're looking at low-hanging fruit, it's the easy fruit, you know? Um, you want to be able to maximize the entire tree, not just the low-hanging fruit, but be able to find it. So why doesn't everyone focus on replans? Replans require more patience, but the outcome can be gold. Replans is more of a long-term mindset, um, but the time and effort is rewarded. Replans... It's hard work, but that hard work does not go to waste at all. Replans is the answer. There's so many different strategies that we can show you and teach you about how to buy items and, and be able to find re replenishable items. But when you do, it's almost like a money tree because you're able to consistently, it's like a tree that every year continues to produce fruit. It's one tree, it grows its fruit, produces a harvest, and then it grows back more fruit the next year. It's replenishable. That tree is replenishing its own fruit. Same thing with replens on Amazon. You find something locally, you send it in, it starts to sell out, and you can go back and restock that item and send it into Amazon again. It is awesome. So replens are a huge boost to your sales and profits. Um, but what about Q4? 
during Q4, there might be short-term replans. There might be items that you start selling. You like you buy it in late October. You send it to Amazon. It sells in early November. And then you restock it and send it in for late October. And it sells again toward the end, or excuse me, late, uh, mid, mid-November. And it sells in late November. Then you buy some more and you send it in. And it, it sells in early December. And then you send some more in and it sells in mid-December. There can be some short-term replans. And let's talk about that. Q4 short-term replans. Maybe only a replan for the months of Q4 in January because people still keep buying stuff in January. Maybe because the, it's a it's a short-term replan because the prices are just higher during Q4. And after Q4 passes, the prices normalize and it's not as profitable as it was before. I mean, sometimes they remain profitable. And if they are, continue to replenish it throughout the year. But higher prices are temporary. Um, but like I said, sometimes it can be a replan well into Q1. The temporary high price might take a while to lower and normalize, but you can still continue to ride that wave selling those items. Um, and some items could potentially turn into year round replans. Like sure, the highest profitability is during uh, November and December, but even January through October, it's still profitable for you. So just maybe it's just not priced as high. So replans are awesome during Q4. Um, I promised I'd tell you this, and this is what I want to share with you next. How to source the hard to find toys. I have hard to find in quotes because we're going to make them not hard to find. And the way to find the hard to find toys is to get them before everyone else. Basically, you're, we're going to make it a little bit harder for everyone else to find them. So we're going to find the uh, hard to find toys. Do we find them in the clearance? No, no, no. Um, where do we find them? We find them with our eyes. This is something that is a retail arbitrage strategy during Q4 that I am always looking for. Look at these little Pomsy. Is it Pomsies? Yeah, Pomsies. Plush. There's different colors of Pomsies, but wait a minute. There's uh, there's a, a section of Pomsies that are missing. And that Pomsie happened to be like a lime green color. And oh, it, uh, wow, the lime green color Pomsy is priced very high on Amazon because it's harder to find. Like, well, this is my local Walmart. Maybe I'll start looking for Pomsies at other Walmarts or going to walmart.com and finding these the lime green Pomsie. So if you are able to see that it might be already out of stock where you are, it might not be out of stock down the street or online. Um, look at this one, How to Train a Dragon, in cap. Um, I'll, I'll let you take a look at it for just a moment and see if you can tell which item might become a hard to find item. There is something called a short print where uh, a manufacturer <clears throat> makes multiple variations and one of the variations is just not made as much. So for the How to Train Your Dragon um, plastic toys, they made sure that there was plenty of the main character, plenty of the other, uh, the, the, uh, the other bigger characters in the program. But there is one dragon that stands out because it's not made as much If you can look at this end cap you can see for yourself that the white and i don't know the name of that character for how to train your dragon um the white one was not made as many like maybe they made plenty of the black ones and plenty of the dark blue ones and plenty of other colors but the white one i was only able to find one maybe two per store that i went to and I realized I was able to find a hard to find item. It was, I knew that was going to turn into a hard to find item because it was a short print. And just scanning it on with my barcode app uh, with Scoutify, I was able to see this is already selling for a lot. And if I know that every Walmart only has one, maybe two of them, the price is just going to go up. And the, the, the number of, stock is going to go down so i went around town and again purchased as many of these white dragons as possible anytime i saw a white dragon 
I purchased it knowing that it was profitable and going to be a hard to find item um, and helped me fill up my carts with multiple loads of inventory, finding hard to find items to sell on Amazon. So um, look at this, uh, look at this picture of uh, uh, in one of the stores that I was sourcing at. Um, I, uh, I don't know if you know, I, I, I'm 6'3". I know I have a little bit of an advantage being tall with this, but um, both of these pictures, you can see uh, this, the right here uh, in the middle uh, on the right hand picture, there is an item that is completely not there. It is sold out. Or, or is it? On the picture on the left, you can see on the very top shelf, that's where a lot of stores place their overstock. They place their overstock because when they first put the, the items on the shelves, they were full then. And what their employees are supposed to do is when an item sells out on a regular shelf, they're supposed to take it from the top shelf and the overstock and replenish that stock on the main shelves. But we all know that um some store employees might not be working as as well as they should and so if you see like on the picture on the right if you see an item it's missing it's not there don't just assume it's sold out look on the very top shelf and see if it's up there most of them most of the picture most of the items on the top shelf they'll still have the barcode so you can even like get your phone uh and and try to put your hand out to scan the barcode to see what it is. Um, I've also, I've also um, purchased like, a, you know, the little selfie stick type of thing, uh, not to uh, take selfies, but to hook my phone up to it and be able to check the prices by scanning items um, onto the top shelf and and no, if it's a, if it's profitable, if it is the exact item that I, that's missing on the bottom shelves. So again, it might seem sold out to the, your regular person just walking through and shopping, and they don't realize there's more on the top shelf. Some stores hide it on the top shelf. Some some stores hide it on the bottom shelf, or like in the very back of the bottom shelf. Um, so you can look yourself if you have a little one with you. You can ask them to to look on the bottom shelf uh, for you, but it's possible for you to find stuff that might be missing on the shelf, but also might be available on the top shelf. So that's how just a few of the strategies that we use to find those items that are hard to find. I think it might frustrate many normal customers if they came to the store to find an item and realized, oh, the store shelf is empty. They don't have it. When they still did, they still have. They just didn't know it. So finding the hard to find toys is something. So Q4 is a time for short-term replans that can really help you grow your Amazon business. So we are going to um, go into the Q&A time. So I want to make sure that you have asked your question. If you have not asked it yet, go ahead and ask it now. You can ask it in the chat or in the questions tab. We can have some fun answering as many questions as possible. Welcome back to the show, Rebecca. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I've been compiling the questions. We've been getting some really good ones, some of them related to replans and some of them more general FBA questions. So we're going to prioritize the ones about replans first, but then we'll get to the other ones. And if you see me looking over here, it's because I have another monitor <laughs> that I'm looking at that I'm compiling everything on. Yeah, same so, for me. This is where I'm looking at my yeah. other monitor. So first, is it better to have a wholesale relationship for replans or can you do it long term doing RA and OA? Retail arbitrage yeah. and OA, online arbitrage. I mean, I think it's it's good to have a wholesale relationship, but um even wholesale replans sometimes come in and go in waves. Um you know, there's really wholesale relationships that we had for uh, seven or eight years, you, you know, that things just change. Sometimes the item is no longer profitable. Sometimes a wholesaler or a brand makes a decision and no longer, you know, no longer continues to sell their items or let, allow third party sellers. Um, and so the best thing to do 
is to have a well-balanced um, inventory of replens that include retail arbitrage uh, and wholesale and our online arbitrage. Now you don't just boof, boof. You don't just poof. All of a sudden you got those in every, all three areas. I recommend picking one to start with, finding a handful of replens before you start trying another strategy when it comes to sourcing. Okay. If you could put a number on it, what would be a good number of one product to buy to see if it would be a good replan? So we're talking about test buys here. Yeah, and this is a little bit about what we're going to go into on tomorrow's call. So you want to be sure that you're in session three for our talk tomorrow. But there is a tool that you can use to kind of guesstimate how many sales a, you can expect and you can compare the number of sales that you expect an item to have in a month with the number of competitors who are also selling the item. And then you can do the math um, and and be like, okay, if I want to try to buy one month's worth of supply, what number would that be? And you can do the math. We'll go into this more in tomorrow's session. So be sure you come back for that. Yeah, there's a, this is a data-based um process. So you want to make sure that you're looking at all the numbers involved. Yes. Um, another question that involves numbers. As a beginner, what would be the minimum number of replans to have as a goal to start seeing a positive cash flow so that you can cover the costs of your software tools? That is a really good question. That is a really good question. Um, and I think it's a question that I want to give you my best guesstimate now live on the call, but then also come back tomorrow with maybe some more clarity on, on that. Um, um, because you, because honestly, the more I think about it, you can have a replan that makes you $5 every time you sell it. And you can have another replan that makes you $25 every time you sell it. Um, and those are just two replans, both bring in different types of, of ROI. Um, and so the, the the two main tools that I recommend for Amazon sellers to use in their accounts, um, in their business, is Inventory Lab and Keepa. And those, are, those two tools both come with a monthly cost. Um, you can find out more information about Inventory Lab at fultimfba.com slash inventory lab. You can find more about Keepa, fulltimefba.com slash Keepa. Um, and both of them, again, if you, you can look at the monthly costs for both of those services, and then now you know what kind of profit you need. So it's not how many replans do you need, but what is the profit margin that you would need to have for those replans to cover the cost? So, and I think that's the best answer I can come up with. Yeah, that there's there's more math involved than just yep. the number of items. It's also or the number of replans. It's the number of replans and how many you're selling a month and how much profit you're making from that. All of that multiplied together will get you to that answer. But that's a really good thing to be looking at because you need to know all those numbers or your business is going to just be floundering and you'll never yep. know if you're actually making money or not. Yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. What is the best store to look for this stuff to sell? That is a question that varies according to where you live and according to other factors. What would you say, Stephen? I mean, I think there are pros and cons of almost every kind of store. Like there are stores that everyone has heard of um, that can be good for you. There are stores that are regional that I've never heard of, but you have because it's regional to you that can be good for you. There are stores that no one's heard of that, you know, that maybe a specialty store that's just in your area that could be good for you. Um, the, you know, I wish I could just say, go to this store, you'll be fine. But it's, it's the, it's the chase. It's the hunt. It's uh, the treasure seeking, you know, I wish I could just. What's that? Creativity. Yeah, being creative. Like, um, like I know, like this is this is a few years ago. I used to get some of my Q4 replens at a Love's gas station, 
because they put a, a bunch of toys and they're just having me one toy that was a good seller and they restocked that for a few months knowing that you know people would be coming into the gas station truck drivers getting stuff for their kids and and random people just coming in and buying stuff and it was a it was a good replan for a few months. Um, and I never would have thought of that. I was just in line getting, you know, to to pay for gas and or maybe I was just picking up ice for a camping trip or something and came across this item. And so don't ever write anything off. Just get out there and be looking and you Yeah, might- always be sourcing. That that's another thing is that you just never know when you're gonna find something that I like to think about items that I'm buying for myself, like niche items. There's been craft items. There's been cooking items that I've been looking for for different projects that I've been doing that when I come, come across them on a a random website, I, you know, then get the idea, Oh, I need to look into this and see if this is something we could be selling. And we found some replants that way, something that we've been selling for several years and I actually need to go check on and see. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking, don't you? I see? do know what you're talking about. <laughs> I yes. need to go check on that one. I just realized. Um, because yeah, you just never know when you're going to find something. So it could be anywhere. It really could. Yes. Again, it's not, they're not everywhere, but they could be anywhere. Right. Yes. That's a good thing. They're not everywhere, but they could be anywhere. Yes. That's That could be like a horror story to you. <laughs> Um, so listening to you, it looks like the best way to find profitable inventory is just to put time in scanning products. Is that the best way to find replants? Yeah, uh, yes. If if in fact, if you're able to go set aside some time and you go to a store and you pick an aisle and you scan every single item in that aisle, you know it's possible that you might find one or two replens during that time. It's also possible you might not find any at all. Then you go to the next aisle and it is, it, it sounds it's, it's, it could be kind of boring, but man, when you find a replen that you realize I'm possibly going to sell this for months, potentially years, that is game changing money right there, honestly. And, and so If you just have the patience to do it, that's why I said, why doesn't everyone look for replants? Because it requires patience and hard work. And if you want to put that patience and hard work into it, those replants will pay you back and for quite some time. Yeah. And the same goes, if you're not doing RA, if you're doing OA, the same goes for that, or even for doing wholesale sourcing, when you get price lists and catalogs from wholesale um, suppliers, you're just doing that scanning digitally rather than walking up and down an aisle with your um, smartphone. And it's the same concept though. You, If you're doing manual sourcing online or if you're using a scanning tool like Tactical Arbitrage, you're having to just go through and look at each item and make those decisions about whether or not it's going to be profitable for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're down to a couple of questions here that are not necessarily replan related. So this is going to be our last call. I'm going to ask Stephen these questions. And then if you have any other questions that you've thought of related to replans or selling on FBA in general, be sure and leave those for us now. And if not, you can keep them um, top of mind and ask us tomorrow in tomorrow's yeah. Okay, so not a replan specific question, but if one of your kids wanted to start their own Amazon business, what advice would you give them? Um, Yeah, this is interesting because one of my students, I almost said one of my students, one of my kids who's a college student wants me to show him the ropes of like how to make a a, a buying decision. So when it comes to... um, selling on Amazon, I would teach them the process of finding inventory. That would be my main thing to, to, to focus on and help them understand. And then you can fill in all the blanks for the, you know, business aspects of it um, sometime later, but get, get them an idea of how to start. Cause that's the most important thing to do in your, in your Amazon business is finding inventory and being able to work through that. Yeah. And I would add to that, that if somebody 
a kid or anybody was like, I think I'm thinking about doing this and you suggest that and they try it and they're like, I don't really like sourcing for inventory. Well, then that's <laughs> probably not a good fit for you to yeah. have an FBA business. And so, um, yeah, that's a really good place to start is learn how to source for inventory. See if that's something that you're um, interested in, that you enjoy doing, you enjoy that hunt, and then go from there, learning the business aspect of running a business. Yeah, because you could just take the regular Amazon app that you know that every Amazon customer probably has on their phone and just use that, use the barcode scanner and see what it's selling for on Amazon and and then think, okay, well, I see how much it's going to cost me to sell. If you assume like a third, uh, Amazon takes about a third or, or a little bit more in fees then that's probably what you're going to take home as a profit. And so it just it gives you a baseline of understanding of, of, of how that would work. Yeah, that's just for practice purposes. Yes. I would not make actual buying decisions based no. that way without using an app that tells you all of the fee structure. Right. And if you're even allowed to sell the item. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And more information like, yeah, keep it information and whatnot that we'll get into tomorrow. We yeah. keep saying... Hopefully this is helping you to see how important it's going to be to come back tomorrow because tomorrow's a really big day in learning yeah. how to make really smart decisions that will help you not to lose money. And that's really important. Oh, yeah. All right. So here's the last question, unless somebody else comes in with um, something else here at the end. But of your 10 trainings available, which would you suggest as the first one to take for someone who has dabbled in FBA? The reseller's guide to replenishables question mark. That's a good question. Um, our beginner course is called Jumpstart Amazon. And even those who have dabbled in selling on Amazon, I feel like would still get a lot out of that course. I put together that course as the beginner course to make sure you understand the fundamental essentials of of making income selling on Amazon. And I just wouldn't want there to ever be a another course that mentions something that you're like, I don't know what that means because I didn't take the beginner course. And so I always tell people to start with Jumpstart Amazon, which is our beginner course. Um, but if especially the... if you're using a word like dabbled, because dabbled can mean different things to different people. So it's like, right. how much are you dabbling? Right. But I would say tied for second um, would be the reseller's guide to replenishables and the reseller's guide to keepa those those are both huge helpful courses yeah and i'll say also too as kind of a, a teaser for later in the week stick with us because we have more information on um some of that training information and and yeah. beyond training and beyond i will say coming up later in the week yeah no spoilers <laughs> it's a teaser not a spoiler that's true. That's and I wouldn't true. have brought it up except somebody asked and I don't want to leave that question hanging because it's a good so, question it is a good it is a good question and I like that you're thinking that way and, and curious yeah. about that yeah all right well that's all the questions we've had come in today so if you are still thinking about your questions be sure and come back and give them to us tomorrow or you can email us at fulltimefba.com slash contact and um, we'll have your questions answered for you here as well. And I'm really excited to continue to talk through this. Again, five days workshop. We just finished day two. Day three is going to be probably one of our, our biggest, most game-changing sessions. So we would do want to invite you to come back for that. Um, uh, we'll have all the replays up probably about an hour and a half or two hours after each session. If you go to fulltimefba.com slash replay, uh, you'll be able to gain access to the current replays. Um, and as always, because you've registered for this, uh, you'll get the emails for each of our sessions um, and, and gain access to that. So we look forward to seeing you next time tomorrow night on day two of the Amazon Q4 Income Accelerator Workshop. So thank you so much. All right. I got the chat saved. Excellent. I know you're always waiting for that. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Thank you everybody for being here. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bye. God bless.